growing up in Anderson, uh, I was familiar, of course, with the Paramount and the uh, State and the Riviera and occasionally the Times. But that was the extent of my knowledge of theaters in Anderson <clears throat> until I got in, it, uh, delved into something one time and I came across the name and I thought, well, what was that? And that led to this and that led to that and all of a sudden here we are. And I think you'll be amazed at what our city had at one time. Today's version of theater entertainment has evolved from one quite different than what first appeared in Anderson in 1883. During that time, the word theater had a different connotation than it does today. Movies had not arrived, and theater was another name for opera house. Over the years, from 1883 to 1942, the following theaters operated at various times in Anderson. And here we go. The Air Dome, Best, Bijou, Casino, Colonial, Cozy, Crystal, Doxy Opera House, Fawn, Granada, Grand Opera House, Indiana. Are you surprised already? Yes. We've just started. Isis, KB, Lyric, Madison, Meridian, New Capital, Nickelodeon, Olympic, Orpheum, Palace, Paramount, Park, Princess, Ray, Regent, Ritz, Riviera, Royal, Star, Starland, State, Times, and finally when? Who counted? Good. I'm glad you didn't. Now we'll reveal them to you one at a time. <laughs> Costing $80,000, Anderson's first theater was the Doxy Opera House, which opened on June 15, 1883. Built by Charles T. Doxy, it was located at 4147 North Meridian Street. Now, I can see the wheels turning right now. Where on earth is that? Well, we are under the Philadelphia street numbering system before 1900, which placed an address every four feet. And hence, the address change we didn't change to our present street numbering system until 1900. I'll show, I'll show it to you so you'll, be, <coughs> so you'll uh, understand it. It featured classic stage extravaganzas that traveled the country. The Doxy Opera House burned in November of 1884 and was rebuilt by Mr. Doxy on the same site. He had no insurance. When it reopened in 1885, it was described as a beautiful Thespian Temple. However, in 1893, fire again destroyed the interior and it was not reopened. And again, he had no insurance. How many, how many were living here in Anderson in the 1950s and 1960s? Raise your hand. You've been in this opera house. You, you just didn't know it. In 1895, the building was occupied by the Banner Store. On the left is a artist's rendition of the Doxy Opera House, and you can see quite an impressive structure for its time. And on the right is an early picture of the Banner Store shortly after it occupied the old theater. We don't remember it looking like that, at least I don't. Some uh, handbills that I found uh, from uh, advertisements for uh, plays there at the Opera House. Now, the Opera House was not <clears throat> opera. Let's make that clear right now. The Opera House was nothing more than just a place where entertainers came and performed, and they could be any kind of entertainment, from comedians to singers to dancers to whatever, but the whole venue was called an Opera House, but nowhere can I find in its history where an opera was performed in the Opera House. That's a uh, picture of the um, banner store. You can see the name on the side. This is what it looked like on Meridian Street years ago. And it's set in this space right here, which today is 927 Meridian. 
1884, another theater opened in town, <clears throat> the Olympic Theater. It was on the north side of 8th Street, just west of Meridian, located at four and a half West 8th Street. The theater was on the second floor. You see the addresses were such, whole numbers were first floor, half numbers were second floor. I don't know what they did if they had a third floor. <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> this is a, a late 1950, early 1960 photograph, and this is that theater, and you can see the balcony is still in place. Here it is back in the day. This is the corner of Meridian and 8th Street would be the northwest corner of that intersection. Today this site is occupied by this building. After a fire gutted the interior on March the 10th, 1893, it too passed from the scene. As apparently it was not a paying proposition, the city was in need of a theater and a grand theater it got. Former Anderson Mayor John Terhune, who had put up more buildings and business blocks than any other man in Anderson, announced on December the 28th, 1894, his intentions to erect on the corner of 11th and Main a three-story structure of which the principal feature would be an opera house. When the Grand Opera House opened October 22, 1895, it had a seating capacity of 1,400. That was the largest theater in Madison County. Only Elwood's um, Kramer Grand Theater, which seated 1,100, was even close to the Grand in Anderson as far as seating. Featured were elaborate theater, uh, theatrical productions, symphony concerts, as well as one-man shows. The region's abundance of natural gas brought business to Anderson along with a number of wealthy people, many of whom owned boxes in the theater and had their names engraved on those boxes. The grand lasted until 1923 when it closed due to the increasing interest in movies. This is a picture I have of the Grand Opera House. The um, marquee area is gone from this picture. Uh, if you can just imagine a, a, a marquee over the front of it here. Um, I did find where John Philip Sousa performed there. It gives the date as January 30th. I don't know what year that was. It just says January the 30th. But I do know that John Philip Sousa performed there numerous times. This is the um, program called Hearts of the World was the, uh, the play and they're advertising a crocodile liniment. <laughs> I don't know where you bought that, <clears throat> but I would, I would be leery of the shop. Uh, <clears throat> interesting in the Opera House is that when, when, it, when attractions would come to Anderson, they may stay one night, or they may stay more than one night, depending. Uh, some of them were, they would come into Anderson by railroad, go over to the theater and perform and then leave that late at night to get on the railroad to go to the next stop. Or they might stay two or three days, depending on what the booking was. But you can see some of the, uh, the programming that uh, the Opera House featured. This is an interior view. This is a rare shot of that Grand Opera House. It had a main floor, a balcony, and a second balcony. And then the, the balconies all wrapped around to where they look down on the stage. Okay, 1,400 people. It was situated here in this area where the Anderson Police Station is located today. I'm told by <clears throat> some, some uh, folks who uh, are associated with the police department that when this building was excavated to build it, uh, they were building over where the Opera House was located and they went down three stories below the ground where the basement was of the Grand Opera House. So the, the Grand Opera House was three stories deep underneath the ground. Casino. In 1896 the Casino Theater opened at 42 East 9th Street, again that old numbering, street numbering system. It was advertised as a variety house. We would know it as vaudeville. With its opening, the age of variety shows, also known as vaudeville, was begun in Anderson. Vaudeville was so popular that more theaters opened, and with some featuring three shows daily. 
Vaudeville was a hard life for the performers, but it was even harder on weekends when they went to four shows a day. By 1899, the theater had ceased operations. It was located at 124 East 9th Street. From 1900 to 1903, the Park Theater was located at that same address, the former site of the casino. In 1904 and 1905, that same theater was renamed the Ray Theater. From 1910 to 1913, it was called the Bijou Theater. So you can see one theater, same address, different names, different owners. All featured vaudeville acts. Now probably the question that you might have in your mind now is, how big were these theaters? They weren't very big. If they had 50 seats in them, they were large. If they had 50 seats in them, they were large. They were not large seating, like what we have today, of course. This is the old <coughs> Hotel Doxy that was on the northeast corner of 9th and Main, and the theater was just east of the, uh, of the hotel that I just spoke about. Look for the new Bijou Theater. Uh, we'll be the finest little vaudeville house in the Middle West. Wait for the grand opening under the personal management of Kane and Davis. The Ray Theater, a handbill for that. Admission was 15 and 25 cents. This is a program um, with grand, grand minstrels. Minstrel, <clears throat> traveling minstrel shows were probably the most popular of all of the theater entertainment. All of them, there were companies that traveled all over the country because of the singing and dancing that they did. They put on lively shows, and so it was a popular feature to have the uh, minstrels come to Anderson. You can see the lineup of some of the other folks there and what they did. The Casino, Park, Ray, and Bijou Theaters would have been located right in this area along East 9th Street. The Crystal. By the turn of the century, other theaters were making an appearance. The most notable was the Crystal Theater, which opened May 19, 1905 at 116 East 8th Street. All seats were 10 cents for the matinee. In the evening, the lower floor seats were 20 cents and the balcony seats were still 10. While it began as vaudeville theater, it converted to silent films around 1912 and then sound around 1929. It operated continuously from 1905 to 1934 and again an advertisement for it. This is the Crystal Theater. I caught a picture of a Anderson Fire Department leaving number one fire station going right by the Crystal Theater. You see the name here on the marquee. And by an odd set of circumstances, the Crystal Theater was located where the Crystal Arch. No connection, no connection. When, when this building was all planned and the arch was planned, I doubt that anyone had knowledge that it once was a theater there by that same name, but that's, call that fate, I guess. The era of silent films in Anderson began around 1912 and lasted a short time till 1929. The Nickelodeon Theater was at 17 East 9th Street. It would have been in one of these buildings along the south side of the courthouse square. Today that's, uh, what, Citizens? Plaza Park along the south side of the square. Um, five cents for admission. Again, it would have been along, in, it would have been in one of these buildings before these were all torn down. You all remember the old Anderson Hotel, I'm sure. Today it is the, the park that I just spoke of. Cozy had both vaudeville and film. It was at 1022 Meridian. Uh, Find it first around 1912. It was there till through 2021. It was located in the first floor of the old Masonic Temple on Meridian Street, if you remember that. The Cozy Theater was in the first floor of that. It shared that area with the interurban ticket office. And this is a note card, note piece of paper. A man by the name of Fred Brown was the proprietor at the Cozy Theater, and he introduced the acts. And he had his list of acts written out here. He's the one who came out on the stage and said what's coming next, and then stepped back. 
and a relative of his gave this to me. You can see his handwritten notes there. The Cozy Theater was right here. Here's the downtown parking garage, and the Cozy Theater was right here where the alley is. This would be Meridian and 10th Street here. The Orpheum showed silent films and then sound. It was at 912 Main. You see the years that it operated. This would be at silent, and then these are the years that it operated sound. You can see it's a much shorter time. What was going on in the United States in the 1930s? Depression. The Depression. People did not have money to go to theaters, and so the support of theaters dropped off somewhat. But here's the Orpheum Theater. You could get you a hot hamburger for a nickel before you went up to the show. That was in this area of what is now Star, China area. The Princess had silent films. It was at 1038 Meridian. Right in this area right here, this is where the parking garage is on Meridian today, at the corner of 11th and Meridian. But the Princess Theater was in there. And there's the parking garage. The Royal had silent films. Its address was 746 Main. You can see its years of operation. Here is the Royal Theater, the entrance to it, and it was in this building that later was the gas company in downtown Anderson. Occupied this space right here. The Star featured silent films. They were at 932 Meridian. You see their years of operation, not very long. This building right here on Meridian Street was where the Star was located. The Starland was initially the Fall Rose proprietors Joe Faulkner and John Roseberry. It featured silent and sound. It opened on, the, on Christmas Day, 1913. It was at 1115 Meridian Street. It operated from 14 and 15 through 28, 29, and then again in 30 to 34. Again, the Depression hit it, and then it was vacant from 1935 to 1941. This is a photograph taken of the Starland Theater. Um, I looked on the marquee and found that uh, the live wire Max Sennett comedy was playing there between November the 8th and November 11th, 1925. So that dates the picture for us. That building's still here today. It is still here today. And it looks like that. If some of you know the Laura Sandlin and Insurance Agency on Meridian Street, that is the old Starland Theater. In fact, future President Calvin Coolidge made a speech in April of 1920 in that theater. The third alarm, you see this advertisement on Anderson Fire Department truck. They're advertising the third alarm playing at the Starland starting on Sunday. It's obviously a snowy day. I looked that up too, and the third alarm played from Sunday, February 25th through Wednesday, February 28th, 1923. This says it's starting Sunday, so it's a few days before that, but that does date this to February 1923. And if you notice, here's the Union Building, and what you don't see is the Paramount Theater. It's not built yet. Not built yet. Incidentally, this was a film about um, fire and firemen and so forth, hence the reason for the fire truck to advertise it. The ISIS played silent films. It too was in this area on 19 East 9th Street. The Indiana Theater hosted silent films. It was at 920 Main. It's still there. Only it doesn't look like a theater. It looks like that. If you know on Main Street, I think it's, I went by there this morning coming here. The building is vacant, but I think there was a, uh, a surveyor in there, a surveyor's office was in there recently. Um, but that is the theater. Again, you can see, couldn't see a lot of people in these theaters. The Air Dome. This is, this is an interesting theater. 1913 to 1915, the Air Dome Theater was located at 29 West 11th Street. 
This was an open air theater on the south side of 11th Street. It was in the back of a little frame house west of the alley that housed the old traction station. Kids would find their way to the roof of nearby Kimball Hayes Drugstore to see the shows for free after dark. Because it was open air, they would get up on the roof of the building that was next to it and sit there and watch the show for free. This is an image taken from the Union Building looking across Meridian Street. Here is 11th Street and the Air Dome Theater was in this area where you see these trees. This is the old First Methodist uh, Church before it, the one that was there that burned. And this space right here, here's the Historical Society. This space right here that is parking behind the Y is where that Air Dome Theater was located. Grand opening of the Air Dome Theater, 1,500 seats. As I have researched it, the seats were nothing more than two by fours on cement blocks, but you had a seat and you paid a nickel to do that. Nineteen nineteen. <clears throat> it was the heyday of the old silent movie houses as more open after the end of World War I. Beginning in nineteen nineteen was the Riviera. It started with silent, then it went to sound, silent in this era, and then sound here. And as we know, the Riviera operated clear up through nineteen seventy nine. Have some early pictures of the Riviera here and here after a uh, remodeling had been done. Today, the Dickman Town Center occupies the site of the former Riviera Theater. The Meridian Theater, it featured silent films. It was at 1035 Meridian, its dates of operation. It was owned by the Victory Theater Company in 1920 and 1921. They were a large it was the era of, of conglomerates beginning to own theaters, and the Victory Theater Company was a nationwide owner of local theaters. The Meridian was in this building. This would be the northwest corner of Meridian and 11th Street. For those of you from the Historical Society, we're right across the street. This is now a parking lot, but the Meridian Theater was in that building. This is the site of the Meridian Theater. The Madison featured silent films. It was at, at 8 West 8th Street, only for a, a couple of years, and it would have been in this building right here. The new Capitol was on the southwest corner of 13th and Meridian from 1928 to 1929. Today that same corner is occupied by the state but another theater occupied that by the name of New Capital, just for a short time before the state was built. And then the Palace Theater on the northeast corner of 12th and Meridian also, same year for a short time, was on this corner before the Paramount was built. The Granada featured silent and then sound films from 1924 to 1937. The Granada was the old Grand Opera House, St. Mary's Church, Beverly Terrace, this is 11th Street, and here is the Granada Theater. Again, had it, it had converted to films from the Opera House uh, venues because Opera House uh, performances were falling off and films were taking its place. Ben-Hur played there. This would have been a silent film. I recognize Francis X. Bushman. The Guy Players. Don't know anything about them, but it was free to see them, so they couldn't have commanded uh, too much attention. Again, it was here in the Granada Theater where the Opera House was located. The Fawn featured silent films located at 924 Main. The Fawn was in this area. Here's what was the former Indiana Theater and just across the alley was the Fawn Theater. So they were in competition with one another. 
The Regent featured sound films, formerly the Isis, again in this area. So this is three different theaters that occupied this south side of the courthouse square at one time or another, not all at the same time. The Ritz featured sound films. It was at 918 Meridian. You can see it opened the winter of 2829 and it went through 3334 again. Uh, the Depression most likely closed it down. If you'll notice, this is a, <clears throat> a crowd of people. I'm guessing it's probably the 4th of July, downtown Anderson. But I call your attention to this RITZ. That's the Ritz Theater on the east side of Meridian between 10th and 9th Street. Looks like it was an exciting time, doesn't it? And you could get a loan paying 5.5%. The Ritz was here. During the period of the silent, it was an extra feature to have a girl singers as accompanist to liven up the movie. They went on, at, uh, went on one at a time, presumably to make their voices last through the evening. Artificial sound effects were also used to enhance the viewer's experience. We've all seen some of the old films where the guy has two shoes on and he's doing the clopping of a horse uh, to a silent film. But all of that became unnecessary with the advent of sound. The silent film died with an alarming suddenness as each studio rushed into production with its first all-talky movie. By the end of 1929, theaters everywhere were equipped with sound installations, including the Riviera. The first talking movie to come to Anderson was The Jazz Singer, starring Al Josen at the Old Crystal Theater. It was released in 1927 in Hollywood, and the movie played in Anderson in 1928. The sensation caused by the talkies resulted in the construction of Anderson's two finest theaters. The Paramount Theater opened its doors August the 20th, 1929. It was ill-timed, ill-timed for two reasons. Number one, just a few months later was the stock market crash of 1929, which threw the country into depression. But the other problem the Paramount Theater had on its opening day, August 20th, the theater was not air conditioned was not air conditioned. And that hurt their attendance terribly because people did not want to go and sit in that huge theater and not be air conditioned. And then the state opened May 30th, 1930, just nine months later, and it featured healthfully cooled air. Healthfully cooled air. Yeah, healthfully cooled air. And, of course, that just robbed the Paramount Theater of its business because everybody wanted to go and sit in healthfully cooled air. What was healthfully cooled air? On the roof of the State Theater were large um, reservoirs of water. And fans pulled the air from those water containers down into the theater and distributed it. That was healthfully cooled air. I just wonder if open, uh, open uh, water like that, other things might have got in the water. I'm not so sure how healthful it was after a period of time. Interesting photograph here. You see the people lined up? Yeah. On, uh, this is Meridian. Of course, this is uh, 12th Street. To go to the State Theater, it's bank night. Do any of you recall your parents or grandparents talking about bank night at the theaters. Those were popular attractions. If you had, uh, they, they always held a drawing and you could win prizes. You could win dishware, uh, uh, glassware, whatever they were giving away and people went to win that stuff and they always gave away a cash prize. It was a United States savings bond, but sometimes it was worth a couple hundred dollars. And all you had to do was buy a ticket to go to the movie and then if your ticket was drawn, you won that. So you can see the people lining up. It's daylight. You can see it's not night yet. 
But look at the people lined up to get into bank night at the State Theater. State Theater today, I don't know what's going on with that. I hope we don't lose it, and I'm sure you feel the same way. The Paramount operated from 1929 to 1982, and the state operated from 1930 to 1983. They are the only theaters that remain in the downtown today. In 1928, the KB Theater opened at 2307 Columbus Avenue. Its name was changed to the Colonial Theater in 1937. The KB Theater, if you notice this is Columbus Avenue, Del Corimi's Plant One, the KB and Colonial Theater was in this building right here. A red Salvation Army red shield store. It occupied that vacant space today. Another name change occurred when the former Starland Theater became the Times Theater on March the 29th, 1942. How many of you remember the Times? You could see a double feature, a cartoon and a serial on Saturday afternoon, all for the same price of admission. You see the times here. Again, that is the uh, Laura Sandlin, or uh, the insurance agency there. I think Laura's still in. There are three additional theaters that should be mentioned. Uh, the first was the Lyric Theater that was thought to be located on the north side of the public square on 8th Street. Can't find anything about, out, uh, much about it, but it would have been star f in the location of the Star Financial Bank's uh, facility. Second is the Wind Theater, located on the west side of Main Street, three doors south of 10th. Date unknown. Uh, here's an advertisement I have for the uh, Wind Theater. Its address being 1005 South Main. That would put it right in this area next to the post office on Main Street. Finally, the best theater is thought to have existed, but where is unknown. In 1910 and 1911, I found a best, best hotel and restaurant at 2022 East 15th Street. If you're counting, there are 35 theater names. The majority were located on Meridian Street, where, tw where 12 made their home in a four block area between 9th and 13th Streets. The next most popular area was East 9th Street, where seven, with seven in the two blocks between Marine Street and Central Avenue. A few remember uh, when photographs that I have of downtown Anderson. Uh, you see the Riviera, you see the Times, and you see the Paramount, and all the people that used to be in our downtown area. How many can remember going downtown and it just be shoulder to shoulder people? We all remember that, don't we? That same uh, bank night. Today, only the Paramount remains open. Speaking of the Paramount, here are a few scenes of the theater that you may not have seen before. The hit parade with Max Terhune. Does that name mean anything to you? He lived in Anderson, he sure did. That's the Paramount Ballroom, the stage of the Paramount Ballroom. Doesn't look quite like that today, does it? I suppose they lined up that way on purpose? Boys and girls, free. 500 over the hill games, a big kitty show. Saturday, February, 1932. I'd say they got a packed house, wouldn't you? They look happy. These guys know they're getting their picture taken, don't they? <laughs> it's fun to look at old pictures and see, particularly when the people in the picture know they're having their picture taken. The north wall before the renovation in the theater and the south wall, picture taken in 1981. Aren't we fortunate to have that theater? 
This is the renovation that took place between 1989 and 1995, thanks to Jim Abram and several others that helped in that. Um, I can't, I don't know all the people that helped, but what a beautiful place that we have, how fortunate we are. It's always fun, I, I can tell you this much, uh, several weeks ago they featured the Carl Erskine Best We Got film there, and uh, people came from one, one couple was from Florida that drove to Anderson to be there present at that film. As I looked around that night, most of the people in the theater, I didn't recognize them. They were obviously people from, not that I know, can recognize everybody lives in Anderson, but I, I know a great deal of people. And I didn't recognize hardly a few in the audience. They were people from out of town. But you heard comments about, wow, what a place and it made you feel kind of proud. The Paramount is one of only 12 John Eberson's designed atmospheric theaters remaining in the United States and Canada. The 1,458 comfortable seats are richly covered in wine-colored velvet fabric. Its movie screen, 20 by 40, is one of the largest in Indiana. At 6,000 square feet, the Art Deco Ballroom is the largest freestanding public room in Madison County with dinner seating for 400. 41 paint colors and a fortune of gold leaf were used in the restoration. The Grand Page Theater pipe organ is one of only three such organs remaining in the original installation in all of the United States. <laughs>